for their support and our education and our partners moving forward. Uh, EPA, $130,000 to, to roll the photo out. Uh, congratulations to all the Waste to Life competition winners. Um, a well-run event, and thanks to Anne Lyons, Eden Herkes, uh, Kerry Waymouth from uh, Art Studio, and the judges, Amy Whitehead, um, Isis Ray, Rowan and Councillor Chirpman and guest presenters um, Deanne Greg Palio and Craig Salomon yeah. as well. So it's going live. Um, uh, the exhibition, the Waste Art exhibition, as we know, is is uh, in Collingham for a little while. Okay. So everybody can see the 70 odd entries that were were done in that competition. Um, we'll continue on with our educational um, message in relation to the three stream and just as a, a, a we, we are striving to have our um, contamination as low as we can. So we urge we urge all residents if um, if you're in doubt, just throw it into your resident bin and give us a call at council and so for the next time we know exactly where the garbage is going to go. As uh, for those that have been to the Wormtech facility or the Carajon facility and to see what contamination can come through and how it can um, upset the whole apple cart, it is very important that we, we um, source separate as paramount to make sure that the product that we get at the end of the day is as clean and um, usable as possible. Um, the Murrumbidgee Council ward boundaries, there is no requirement to um, seek any uh, realignment with the, uh, the, board, uh, the ward boundaries. Uh, I'm aware that, we, that I'll be undertaking some work in relation to seeing if the boundaries are the best that they can given the representation that um, uh, the representation that is, is required in that space. So that's a project that I'll do moving forward. The Growing Regional Programs Round 1. Um, we've had a look at absolutely everything that we've we've got. Um, the Carolyn Park uh, upgrade is the only uh, only um, master plan we've got that is shovel ready. We've put all the switchery guidelines and got everything. Um, so the recommendation is that you that we Move forward with that project. The, the beautiful, the beautiful part about it is that um, whilst it's a twelve million dollar project, it was initially initially budgeted around about nine nine and a half million. So the twelve million is uh, that was about two to three years ago. Twelve million, about twenty five percent is just what the real costs have been over this period of time. The saving grace is that that um, we only need a ten percent. That 12 million, where a lot of other things probably 50, 50 or 30 percent. So, um, we'll be seeking a recommendation to go ahead with that. Um, we're looking to run a family fun day for councillors and staff to be held at Altina Wildlife Century on the 20th of century on the 29th of September. Um, more to follow in relation to, to that event as we start filming the things like. Um, the Town Life of Darlington Point has asked for a donation request. Of the um, council staff time to set up for the traffic control, so I've got a recommendation for that that that, that uh, takes place. And just my movements over the past little while and into the uh, into the future. Um, the seventeenth and nineteenth there. That's a um, kidney surgery. It just removes the kidney stones. That's all up and up the wall. So. Um, I just put it that uh, the recommendation that, that the information contained in the general manager's report be noted and the council authorised the general manager with the correct interest in the growing regions program round one for the Darlington Point Caravan Park upgrading to a value of $12 million with council's contribution of $1.2 million and two donate traffic control services to the Darlington Point Town Life Spring Festival to be held on Saturday the 
Good afternoon, please be careful you're with the Catholic Church and are there any further questions of John? Just one question, with the growing, um, um, yeah. when does that, when does that finish, uh, the applications finish and when do they? So, expression of interest open on the 5th of July, yep. so this was the only time we put it in and I'm not exactly sure. Oh, that's when we read where the application goes in November. After the expressions of interest is in July. In so July, July, finishes right. in August, and then. Yeah. Yep. Fair yep. Okay, are there any further questions? If not, I'll put the recommendation. We've um, as already read. So, um, those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Um, those against? Aye. Thank you. Item 2, please. Um, item 2 relates to the audit to improve the committee terms of reference. Um, I'll just notice, note that the executive stuff and some of their sort of relates to another item, so that's just an error. Um, but essentially, council uh, is required to have an audit risk improvement committee to do. Um, and there's some um, uh, amendments that are proposed to be made to the Act and Regulations um, to require audit risk improvement committees to. Um, meet a number of requirements um, from the 1st of July 2024. Um, so, Eric has been reviewing its terms of reference um, for the last few months, uh, which, which already exists, but they've just been uh, reviewed by the committee. The main change at this stage is uh, that we're proposing to change the composition of the committee to meet the, um, those guidelines. Um, so, that's to make the council position a non member position and to add an additional independent member from the 1st of July. When they come into effect. Um, obviously, that has a financial implication um, because we've discussed that before. Um, so, that's all set out in the report. But David's sort of being uh, forced to promise. So, that is the way it is. Um, and otherwise, the return of reference, which we've been formally revoked to the charter, are substantially more than the minor amendments that have been made. Are there any questions? Any further questions of paper? If not, I'll put the recommendation which will read the Audit Risk and Improvement Committee terms of reference be adopted by Council. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. Those against, aye. carry. Thank you. Item um, three, please, the financial reserves comment. Item three uh, proposes to adopt the uh, new drafted financial reserves policy. So this has been presented to council previously um, at a workshop and, and discussed quite extensively there. Um, the policy essentially sets out um, all of the reserves that externally restricted and internally restricted that council maintains. Um, and also formally set the target of 1.5 million dollars of unrestricted uh, cash, which is documenting the what the council's kind of um, aimed for directly. Um, the details of all the reserves set out as an appendix to the policy, um, and I'll also note that it identifies uh, three new and internally restricted reserves, so that's the risk management reserve, which is uh, really just a change to how it's uh, treated so we previously carried the state cover rebates forward for employment next, um, formalising that treatment by uh, treating it as a, um, an energy saving initiatives reserve, um, which is the savings that council's been attempting to realise through um, increased uh, power consumption efficiency and, and reduced costs, and to try and, I guess, snowball those into future energy saving initiatives. And then the Darlington Point Real Estate Development Reserve, which is intended to use proceeds from real estate development in Darlington Point for future development and the plans that we can do to be all for. Um, so the, the policy is substantially the same as what was presented to Council at the main workshop, other than those reserves which have been incorporated in there now, but we're discussed at that time. Um, and then just a few uh, clarifications around. Uh, calculation methods and targets. 
suppose that Kathy adopts the policy. Are they have we come in for a second? No. no, it's from the like to move, please. Move Councillor Bryce, second Councillor Furphy. Are there any questions of Taper regarding its financial resources policy? Councillor Furphy. Uh, firstly, I, I do like the idea of the reserve. Um, I'm just asking a question. It's got down the point real estate development reserve. Um, I like it reserved to be targeted at the Bridge Road development, um, what other councils think. But the next stage of major development is Bridge Road. So I preferably I'd like to have that targeted as down the point Bridge Road development reserve so we know what our next funding development is coming along and the money that's put into there is directly aimed at developing the last lot large major subdivision in Donaldson Point. So I feel that should be named targeted at the very next development, which is our last development in council. It's inside the, the levy boat. Um, I, I would note that to, to use the funds from that reserve, we would require a capital adoption in the budget or a resolution mm. anyway. Um, but have to check on the Is there any commentary around that? What does the resolution well, it, it, it partially locks up that money mm. to do that. So mm. I'm, I'm against that idea of locking money away when it's only reserved. If something might come along, then you have to under, under a resolution. To, uh, it's just the no, it's no, just no, the name. No, no, anyway. You have to resolve to <laughs> Yeah, so, so, so I, I don't want to put a name on it. So, I don't want to put a name on it. So, if we have. Don't to put housing. Yeah, I'd rather leave it. Yeah. So, we just have the, the Darling Point Reserve. Yes. Um, Real estate yeah. development reserve. Then the next project automatically comes to Unless something comes out of left here. Um, and, and, it, and it does have to come back to council, it requires a resolution of council to do it. So, um, what, what do you think, Councillor Kirby? Do you still. Uh, I like to have it focused on, on the next development. So, we target, we have a plan, we have a target, and we're moving towards that target. If you don't have it targeted, well, you don't put other things in place, like you start, you don't do your environmental. You don't move on on all the other bits and pieces what you need to put in place beforehand. But then, as this reserve builds up, um, it's then you're ready to do the next development. So if it's targeted, everybody knows what we're aiming towards, and that's what we need to focus on for our very next development. If we're targeted, there's more chance of having an outcome if we stay focused and targeted at our goals. That's why I want to name it Bridge Road. I'm against the idea. There, there, is, there is other blocks, larger blocks within that um, Greenback area that may be applied by the people. And so I'd, I'd rather leave it open to not just a rich road. Just just real estate development. Councillor Sexton, do you have a comment? Sorry. Okay, we'll move on to the comment. Yeah, but you, you're not part of that subject. Okay. And, and what about any, any other councillors have a comment? I, I don't know that it would hurt to have a, I don't know how specific the planning can be, have a list for each community of um, progress development. That was part of um, what I was going to say. We've got this one for Darren to point. So why don't we have one for Jewelry with the, the sales of the box for one tomorrow? Do. Oh, you already do? And mm -hmm. Colleen Lee? Yes, yes. Yeah, you already do. But they're, they're, they're um, general, they're for real estate development space yeah. rather than having a specific one. So I guess, I, um, I guess, do we leave it as it is or do we move with Councillor Curthy's suggestion or I'll just go with a show of hands who, 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 um, who thinks it's suitable as it is? Right, okay. Yeah. That's but the commentary is noted, Councillor Kirby, that that is very much the, the next um, prioritised option for the development of Bridge Road. And I think that's um, I think that's probably um, identified in other other plans we have. Yeah. Yeah. No, okay. No. All right. Um, no. Sorry, John, is it? Oh, it's, that's where we've always spoken about, where we're going next to. It's not in there. Can I suggest that no. rather than renaming the reserve, yes. the, the appendix list doesn't actually rise up, like it's not included within the policy. So what I can do is include them 
Yeah. I'm happy with that. Yeah. Thank you. Happy with that, Councillor Kerr? Yes, definitely. Yes? Okay, so the recommendation will read that the financial reserves policy be adopted. Those in favour, please go on. Right. Those against, carry. Thank you. Item 4, please, the operational plan. Um, item 4 is the pressure event for the before. Um, so this is an annual plan that has been required to produce and adopt as part of its integrated planning and reporting obligations. Um, the plan, the draft plan has been a public exhibition. Uh, um, which closed yesterday. Um, there was uh, a couple of bit of staff feedback came back in relation to the fees and charges, but nothing was really related to it. Um, so, Council has been uh, providing a summary of the changes meeting. Um, as I said, they substantially relate to the fees and charges and just a couple of items in the delivery program that were overlooked when we were uh, putting everything together, and there's no changes to the domestic rule at all. So, it's proposed that Council adopts the operational plan of fees and charges for 2023 2024, incorporating that. That feedback. Would someone like to move, please? Move to Council Shakespeare, except for Councillor Jerbo. Are there any further comments or questions on paper? If not, we will give those who will read. The Council adopts the amended operational plan for 2023 2024 and fees and charges for 2023 2024, incorporating feedback from public submission and fees and fees. Those in favour, please say aye. Oh, Those yes. against, Harry. Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, pedestrian access and mobility plan strategies. Um, as you know, Council advertised for over a month down to the community uh, with very um, lack of feedback um, from the councillors, really uh, indicating um, the cost and strengths of replacement of paths and tram ramps. At this point, um, we then uh, took this back to Transport for New South Wales, which was a grant application, and there's just a correction of title now. Um, it'll have to read uh, cycle access strategies. So, um, Council will adopt um, the three partnerships and when we seek grant funding uh, to proceed with the stages of replacement and new parts required for the plan. Okay, so we'd like to move to the new council price and the council therapy. Are there any questions or comments on Tom, please? I've just got a comment on the um, lady who came and spoke to us during the consultation yes. process was really, really good at her job. Well, I'd agree um, with that. Yeah, I, was I just think she actually listened. She didn't try to read the conversation. She didn't try to impress her thoughts and ideas on us. She gave. Um, well, I think I can speak from the, the, the consultation I had because she is she she was really good at her job. So um uh yeah, that's a good benchmark for our consult our consultants. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um oh, did, did we have a little bit of a second? Yes. yes. Yes? Okay. If there are no further questions or comments, the um recommendation will read. On the motion of Councillors Bryce and Kirby, the Council adopt the cycleway access strategies for Jerule, Victoria, Landau and Point, previously identified as the pedestrian access and mobility plan strategy. I'll put the recommendation. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. Those against, carry. Thank you. Um, item six, please. Uh, thank you. That's good, Madam Mayor. This report seeks the Council um, resolution. Review money council enforcement policy. Uh, council has an existing policy at Rubri. Uh, um, new policy updates that Rubri policy as well as um, bringing it uh, into a uh, parts of the model compliance enforcement policy. The council prepared by the New South Wales Ombudsman's Office. Um, the draft uh, presented to council, the uh, council meeting, being on public exhibition. Okay, thanks, Jeremy. Somebody like me, please. 
Move has got stores, second account's got Sherwood. Um, are there any questions or queries of Gary? If not, um, the recommendation will read the revised Murrumbidgee Council Enforced on Policy be adopted. I'll put the recommendation. Those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Yes. Carry. Thank you. Item seven, please. Uh, thank you to you, Madam Mayor. This um, report presented to the Council um, for adoption. Um, the uh, draft on site sewage management policy basically sets out. Uh, protocols for the um, classification of on site sewage management system within the uh, council area into high, medium, and low, depending on uh, environmental risk they, they, may, uh, they may constitute. Um, it also sets out an uh, inspection regime uh, for those uh, various systems. The drug policy um, brings council into line with the uh, Local Government Act. And was presented to uh, the April Council meeting uh, and been on exhibition for the, uh, uh, the 26th of May. No submissions were received. Uh, so it's now brought back to Council for um, adoption. David, sorry, I'd like to move, please. Move Councillor Bullard, seconded Councillor Bryce. Um, the recommendation will read that the draft on site sewage management adopted. I'll put the recommendation. Those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. It's against. Carry. Thank you. Item number eight, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Madam Mayor. This um, uh, report seeks uh, council's adoption of the draft on the ground on storage system policy. Um, approximately uh, 12, 18, 18 months, two years ago, the EPA handed over the trial and regulation. Certification councils, and um, this policy brings us into line with the requirements that we have to do to carry out um, inspections of our various certifications. Sets out inspection regime guidelines, and it complies with the guidelines produced uh, by the EPA. It's also uh, draft policy presented to council, April council meeting. It's been a public exhibition. Uh, 26th May, uh, submissions to still that's brought back to council to find more documents. Thank you, Gary. Let's move on to move, please. Move Councillor Kirkland, second of Councillor Storm. And are there any, please note that any different questions with Gary? Does this, have a, does this policy cover um, historical, um, where there used to be fuel tanks and things? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. So do they have to, at the point of sale, they need to be inspected or they, do they get inspected? Or? Uh, yes, that's true, uh, inspected. Um, and um, we, we, those of our report will require us to do is to uh, meet and discuss with the operators of all existing and, um, and where we can pass previous owners and operators ground storage and problems. Determine if they comply with the regulations and then if they don't work with them about that sort of works with program to bring up to the current regulations. Disused ones also fall in under the old contaminated uh, land policy or um, stone drama and policy. So there's regulations around that as well. Okay, so it's that policy plus this policy for exit for historic. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, are there any further questions for Gary? So, Councillor Brown, what about above ground storage, Gary? Does that have a different. Um, up down the underground. Down the underground. So, the, um, okay, side of Jerilby, there's a tank yep. that doesn't comply with any specific so those, legislation. Um, so, those tanks are self funded. Theoretically, under um, guidelines from the EPA, for, for, for um, service, service station. That uh, probably should have had a uh, cover around then stormwater landed on site and then uh, uh, taken the contaminated soil, the contaminated ores and soil away from the site, or it should have been funded to provide a bund around it. So any spill uh, fuel would go in on the bund and stay there. Uh, now. Uh, this is a solution that I want to do with the cover. It's covered 
don't need to have fun with the issue of fun where's the um where's the place to go you have to go through a trip in the centre looking for fun somewhere else to take on site that should all be done probably when that and it's the right stuff so there's no retrospective compliance no certainly yeah it could yeah. I think if we uh, are looking to have um, everything as compliant as possible, perhaps. What is that, the feeling of the council that it should be as compliant as possible, if that's what we expect from anybody else coming in this space? Well, that, that particular one does have private um, access. access, so. But it's also self-funded too. Mm. Uh, Look, how far do you go? Farmers have their own. Well, a lot of farmers are still funded yeah. tax now. Mm. So it becomes that. So what, what do you think we need to uh, follow that up as a council, or do we then let it sit as is? Mm. Not in a can of worms, if you. Yeah, we just do what we have to do. Exactly. Mm. And leave it. Well, this is this is this is for towns and. Yeah. Uh, Underground. Underground. Okay. Well, okay. So, so self-funded tanks, what's a self-funded tank? Yeah. Okay, all right then. So I'll put the recommendation if there's no further comment that the draft underground petroleum storage systems policy be adopted. Those in favour, please say aye. Those against, carried. Thank you. Biosurgical inspection program policy um, builds on existing policy council has and brings it in line with the Swimming Pools Act and sets out um, a protocols on the inspection regime for council to undertake the private swimming pools as well as um, um, swimming pools and motels and uh, other public places like that. Uh, it was presented to council the April council meeting. Um, consideration and uh, place on public exhibition at 6 May uh, and um, no submission to the very experience. Let's brought back to council for adoption. We would like to move, please. Move councillors for second council to ask it for voting. First question to Gary. <coughs> if not, the recommendation will read. The revised private swimming pool inspection program policy be adopted. Those in favour, please say aye. Those against, carry. Thank you. Item two, please. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This report seeks a resolution from Council to adopt the revised talking animals, and urban areas policy. Um, one has been brought to Council just a little bit since February and it's been tweaked um, in consideration of Council's comments. The final draft um, uh, takes the April Council meeting the Council resolved to place on public exhibition, and which was done so up until the 26th of May. Uh, during the period, no submission was received. It's brought back to Council for final adoption. Would you like to move, please? Councillor Churvin, second Councillor Sackstick. Are there any further questions for Gary? If not, the recommendation will read that the revised keeping of animals in urban areas policy be adopted. Those in favour, please <coughs> say aye. Those against, carry. Thank you. Thank you. Um, through you, Madam Mayor, uh, this report um, seeks council um, resolution to adopt the drug scholarships, donations, and community grants policy. Again, it was um, presented to council at the basis of council meeting. Um, placed on uh, public exhibition, during which no conditions were received. The principal um, uh, clause of this policy, or the, uh, the main uh, scope of it, brings all these scholarship grant, um, public donations, community grants into one bucket, so they're all considered to be much at one time, which um, I believe helps with our budget process as well as gives. Community at a set time until five more. That's brought back to council final adoption. Okay, who would you like to move, please? Move Councillor Vice, second Councillor Saxon. Are there any further questions for Gary? 
If not, I'll move a recommendation which reads the draft scholarships, donations, and community grants policy be adopted. Those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those against, carried. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Item 12, please. Thank you, to you, Madam Mayor. This report um, introduces Council Draft Plan and Management Authority to the Hall. The consideration will be based on public exhibition. Um, it's one of the plans of management that Steve Carr got out of Sydney Planner has been working on for areas of Crown land and um, it follows the standard um, format of Council Management and during the uh, plan uh, was, uh, the exhibition period, Steve did an undertaking to talk to the board as well. And his Steve was also here today and has been to his council plan. Okay, somebody like to move recommendation, please. Move Councillor Timothy, seconded Councillor. Strong. Okay, are there any further or uh, any questions on Lady Gary or Steve regarding this draft plan of management before he sent the call? Troy, Councillor Major. Yeah, just got a comment under the it talks about waste management. Be good if uh, and about recycling. Was there any bins left over from in town that we could get a couple extra Zillo bins out there, uh, particularly with the recycling part of it? Uh, you, Madam Mayor, look, I'd rather take that question on notice. We did order uh, extras, um, and as any form of out, there's always one to jump out of the wood. So we're hoping that there may be extras, and if there are, we certainly need to know. Yeah. Later, any further questions? No, that's all. That's no. Okay, thank you. Any further questions from the floor? If not, um, I'll put the resolution which will read um, the recommendation the plan of management for Corey Central Hall be endorsed by Council and enable them to proceed to public exhibition. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. Those against, carry. Thank you. Very good. Uh, thank you. Uh, please, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Council. Uh, this report took the resolution Council to place the uh, Draft uh, up of the public exhibition of 28 days. See the public uh, on the uh, right or brought up in the uh, main the uh, council for the public exhibition. Basically, sets out a protocol for council to confirm new areas of uh, one in Jewelry at the moment, one Jewelry at the moment. In the past, uh, I understand um, that these things were just brought to council for consideration about sort of looking at how we would go about um, uh, consulting with the uh, community or any other interest group. But that's the um, main reason. Okay, so we have three phase two. We move Councillor Furphy, second and Councillor Gilbert. Okay, any questions for Gary, please? Just yeah. I noticed that okay. Council I noticed know. that Darren can come to Man Jewelry at our office. Oh, my goodness. Why is that? That's my question. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. No, it just was funny that, I mean, I wasn't even aware we had one until I read this. So I looked and didn't really know. Yeah, mm. and then I thought, sure. well, it's good this now, but why doesn't the third? It might be something we need to look at. Are you in agreement with that? I'm totally agree with you. Thank you. Perhaps, as um, Gary um, stated clearly, when there has been a need to um, like, sanction alcohol, then whatever, it's just. But I think it is good process that each town has right. their own alcohol free um, designated areas and a sippy cover. So, Gary, you will. Let no, um, Councillor Saxby, no, yeah, if he comes up. Well, I personally like to see the skate park area. Well, I was actually going to say that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is actually an issue. Um, are you inferring that there's drinking? No, I'm not. There is a tiny bit. There's not a problem at the moment. Why Why not have, have, have it? No, I'll mm -hmm. Yeah. Glass free, the whole lot free. Yeah. I, I think the only reason why Colleen was 
state is because if you look at where the two alcohol free zones are in Geraldville, Darlington Point, you'll find that there are children engaged in that area, which is why Robert's um, view about around the skate park and maybe Don McGuinness Square, you could quite easily do that. I'd like to see this. As an, as an, yeah. as an alcohol free zone. I'd like to see this area alcohol free zone, yeah. except, except yeah. under licence <laughs> premises. Like, like football days, there's a licence premises here, too. So. Okay, so Gary, how do we proceed with this to. The policy adopted? Oh. We'll do that, and then we'll follow through the process of policy. Okay, all right. Okay, did we have a mover and seconder? We did. Julie, did we have a mover and a seconder? Yeah, perfect. Yes, I think that. Yep. Um, okay, uh, I'll put the recommendation which will read that the draft alcohol free zone policy be endorsed by Council placed on public exhibition for 28 days seeking community comment and two, at the completion of the exhibition period, the draft alcohol free zone policy be presented to Council for adoption. So I'll put that recommendation. Those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those against? Harry. And, um, I think that uh, the policy will enable further discussion as to what areas and zones need to be considered in this place. Okay, item 14, please. I think the Premier and the Mayor, this report um, takes the Council to uh, have an endorsement of the Pine and Waste River and Division Community Park Valley Vehicle Run in, on the 12th of the end of August, which we um, uh, determined this to be a high risk event. Uh, uh, rest policy requiring structure change plan for the station to keep in way. They will uh, the vehicle run to consist the registered vehicles and machines that they can move around the poly and township. That's what the council considerations it's, 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 it's the wider part of the poly, not just yeah. not just the town. We're talking about it could go up Martinburg Road, it could go down Anderson Road, it could go you don't know where their plans are. It is, if you think it's just around Collier, but it's not. It's, no. It's, it took you 20 or 30, 40 k's. They used to go out to Boona and have, out to Boona Forest, I think down Yulow Road or something like that, but yeah. Oh, it isn't just Boona. I'll move the motion. Okay. Um, would somebody like to move this recommendation? Oh, I'll move. Councillor Trugan, seconded to Councillor Trugan. Um, any further questions of Gary or any commentary? No? Okay. I'll read the recommendation and that is Council endorse the Collier and River and Vintage Machinery Club Rally Vehicle Run on the 12th of the 7th of August 2023. Those in favour, please say aye. Uh -huh. Those against, carry. Thank you. I will move to the community grants. Okay. Thank you, uh, to, uh, Madam Mayor. This report uh, deals with our resolution for Council to determine the funding recipients from the 2026 grants program for Council to $10,000. Um, the following uh, organisations grants have been largely um, put forward. For approval, um, may include the Central Victoria Community Centre, Bridge Trees and Problem Trust Tables, <coughs> Problem Community Gym, Red Defibrillator Wall Mount, um, sorry, the Polyamory Central School PC Association. Yes. The Collier and Rescue Squad, $2,000 for tools and equipment for light rescue vehicle. Doctor's View Lodge, $2,000 for a treatment chair. Collier and Rescue Point, Darlington Point. Public School, PNC, $2,000 from intensive swimming lessons for students. And Georgia Early Moon Center, $2,000 for social and medicine. Ingle Park and Medical Gardens. The Drury Football Club, uh, $1,595 purchase of a defibrillator. Riverina Vintage Machine Club Incorporated Rally in Polyamory, $2,000 for fire equipment and some upgrade. Track the full track for the rally. Conway will share um, precinct. 
TAC and Creek Contributors Council Incorporated five thousand twenty five dollars for tools of fifty dollar repairing stains and beds. Hey, so would with somebody walk in you, please? New council two, the second council school. That the um the below mentioned one with more no, no, no. the, the below mentioned um uh organizations. Uh, receive uh, community grant funding. Uh, if there's no further questions, Ms. Gary, I'll put the recommendation. Those in favour, please say aye. 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 Those against, carry. Thank you. We'll move to item 16, please, employee Emily Solomon. Uh, thank you, Chair. Madam Mayor, uh, this report deals with Council of Resolution to uh, recommend uh, funding recipient for the Emily Solomon Community Fund. Um, those uh, grants that are uh, put forward will be the Collier Central School, the C Association, for an amount of $108 for intensive student lessons. Collier Rescue Squad, uh, $3,000 um, for stabilization equipment for a light rescue vehicle. Volume Mill Fire Brigade, three thousand dollars for the wash dryer. So just a, a correction to that: it's eighteen hundred and thirty-three dollars for the Volume Rescue Squad. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, because you also the renewal fund will be for the Volume Mill Fire Brigade, which is four hundred and eighty-seven dollars to be to the Volume Mill Fire Brigade. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, very yeah. so, um, yeah. 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 um, contribution towards education grants. Okay, so um, okay, so would somebody like to move, move councillor? The physical council is strong that we um, recommended allocating this to the Collingham Solar Farm Community Fund uh, be carried forward. I'll put the recommendation. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. Those against, carries. Thank you. We'll move to item number 17. I think it's really been met um, what to council resolve to fund a determined fund recipients. Of grant program and the grant forward this year will include the Darlington Point Living Land Centre for two thousand dollars, setting up a not for profit organisation for the insurance and cruise corporation and fees. Okay, so we'd like to move, please. New Councillor mm -hmm. Bryce, second Councillor Gurkey, um, and the recommendation will be um, as stated. Those in favour, please say aye. Mm -hmm. Those against, carry. Thank you. Item 18, please. Um, that was um, a Holy Towns meeting, uh, which we had a very quick meeting, uh, set our working bee program for the next few months, and also set our, it's not listed there, but our AGM will be in October. And then the um, meeting was then <coughs> handed over to Gary Stoll, who presented a um, workshop on our waste, opposed waste and bins, which um, everybody was quite pleased and happy to have Gary there and did a fabulous job. Thank you, Gary. Had a few questions thrown at him, and yeah, some <laughs> curly ones. Was very good. Thank you. <coughs> Somebody want to move? Move Councillor Bryce, second of Councillor Kirby, that the um, minutes of the Jerome Pie Towns community be noted. Those in favour, say aye. Those against, carried. So it's item 19. 
Uh, item 19 is the monthly investment report. So again, this is just a report that's required to be presented to council. Um, each month which sets out the details of council investments. Um, so over the end of May, we had just over 29 investments, about 59% of that in Sendigo Bank, and the uh, money went in rate of return um, is out for the benchmark. Okay. Okay, so we want to move a few Councillor Turpin, second of Councillor Stacey. Any questions for Caitlin? We thought of the recommendation that states council made a monthly investment reports identifying all money council has invested under section 625 of the Local Government Act 1993. Those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those against, carry. Thank you. Item 20. Thank you, this report provides the council's information on the development of patients through um, the last four weeks through May and June. Okay, so let me please move Councillor Black, second in Councillor Chirkwin. Um, the recommendation will read that the information contained in the development application approved under delegation May 2023 report noted. Those in favour, please say aye. Those Sorry, did you have a question, Councillor Kirsty? I had a question in regards to uh, frost fiends. How far are they away from um, town limits? Wow. This is uh, through the Fenomen Recovery. There's no impact. There's no impact <laughs> in regards to residents. There's no receptors or dwellings on social over there. Thank you. Okay. If there's no further questions, I'll put the recommendation. Those in favour, please say aye. Uh -huh. Those against, carry. Thank you. Um, we'll now move to the item without notice. And ask uh, John, please speak. Oh, oh so we'd like to move. Move Council Montana Murphy, second of the floor. Those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those against, carry. Thank you. Um, just uh, quick, uh, a quick update on the public uh, comments, please. Hi, yeah. Um, at Council's ordinary meeting on the 28th of March, we presented a report on the Council House replacement strategy. And we agreed to go to GJ Gardner Homes. Um, after going back to GJ Gardner and forward, um, the inability to come to a cost effective price to our budget um, means that we then seek uh, another builder, which was Session Builders in Shepparton, who seem to have come back with the correct budget amount. Okay. okay. Um, would somebody like to move? Move Councillor Black, second Councillor. For us. Um, are there any further questions of Tom or John? Is that where we gave the tender, where we put out three tenders, or we just go to the next person who can provide the, provide the opportunity yeah. to build it? This is them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Then we go to the quarter million. Aren't we supposed to put out the tender? Is that our policy, or I, I don't understand the other policy? So, go ahead. Okay. So, under the Local Government Act, there is an exemption um, where council determines that. Well, I think it's the, um, basically the, the appropriate outcome would be to see the flat water tender. Um, so, I think what the report that has been put forward and suggested um, in the case of the GJ, GJ Gardner quote, and also this one, is that okay. um, based on the council's previous experience with tenders, the fact that we're dealing with local county. Um, it's not expected that we will receive any, any or derive any value from going to that. That's what's going to be We actually didn't get any value for you. And to go to the tender, we need a floor plan, we need designs, we need absolutely everything. We are completely spending thirty or forty thousand dollars, whereas going to these, we're selecting the home design that they've got, they've built, that they can they can go to. That's the end of the day. There's lots of different ways. Cost. Is it really yeah. yeah. and, yeah. and I guess, um, as, as you correctly asked, Caitlin has um, explained that there is an exemption that allows us to move forward with this process. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, could we have somebody move? 
in black and white, yes. yes. And the recommendation will read that this item without notice be accepted and referred to the June 2023 meeting of council as a required resolution before the next scheduled meeting. And the recommendation will read that section builders be engaged by council to construct a replacement dwelling, the uh, walls of 26 MK2, for the general manager, for the general manager's residence at lot 43 10 Argoon Avenue, which will be for new book residence. Because we're not building it, we're general building the general manager's residence. And to the under section, under section 55, um, bracket oh, three, yes. bracket I of the local government at 19. Session builders be awarded the contract for the construction of the Rosemont 26 MK2 design due to the remoteness of our locality and the unavailability of competitive timbers. I'll put the recommendation. Those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those against, carried. Okay. Would somebody like to move in, move us into confidence? Move Councillor Chirpin, no. second in Councillor Kirby. Those in favour, please say aye. 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 Those against, carried. Thank you. I are we are we all? There you go. Okay, we move to um, item 21, the essential energy site going to point. A result on the motion of um, councillors Black and Straw. Um, that the council um, express interest in the essential energy site in Darlington Point and authorise a general manager to offer the amount as prescribed by council. I'll put the recommendation. Those in favour, please say aye. Oh, aye. Those against, carry. Thank you. And item 22. Um, the engagement of contractors to deliver civic hall upgrade in Monash Park, therefore, change room construction. Resolved on the recommendation of council that once oh, moved by council councillors on the recommendation of councillors Bryce and Straw, the council determines in accordance with uh, S55 bracket three bracket I of the local government Act 1993 that a satisfactory result would not be achieved by inviting tenders for the Jerilby City due to the remoteness of the locality and B, the unavailability of competitive or reliable tenders. Two, the council determines in accordance with S55, bracket three, bracket I of the Local Government Act 1993, that a satisfactory result would not be achieved by inviting tenders for the construction of the netball change rooms at Monash Park to all the the remote locality, and B, the unavailability of the competitive or reliable tendering. And three, that design proprietary limited be engaged to deliver the Jerilby Civic Hall upgrade, <clears throat> part of the enhancement of Luke Park, and the SCCF Hall netball change on Ash Park to Rilby, providing their quote is such that the grant funded works can be completed within budget. I'll put the recommendation. Those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Oh, right. Those against, carried. Thank you. The end. <laughs>